A centrifugal pump should draw in as little undissolved gas as possible. Gas bubbles could collect in its centrifugal force field in the impeller or casing and interfere with the flow. This will have a significant impact on the pump's characteristic curve and operating behavior. In our air intake model test, we will investigate and demonstrate options of reducing such air intake. The model consists of a tank, an inlet line above the water level, the height of the inlet line and thus its distance to the pump can be adjusted, a deflector wall which can be fitted in different places and a balcony-like structure. The inlet pipe of the pump. The following factors are relevant for this test. The water level in the tank, the flow velocity at the outlet, the water inlet line level. Let's carry out the first part of the test. We won't use a deflector. The flow rate equals approximately 4 cubic meters per hour with a low level inlet line. The air enters the water and is swirled. Large gas bubbles quickly rise to the surface. Small bubbles are transported in the direction of the pump's inlet pipe. We will now increase the flow rate to approximately 8 cubic meters per hour with a low level inlet line. The air intake at the direction of the pump's inlet pipe has increased and so has the number of large gas bubbles reaching it. We will increase the flow rate to approximately 12 cubic meters per hour with a low level inlet line. Air intake now affects the entire right-hand side of the tank. A large quantity of gas bubbles enters the pump's inlet pipe. Let's move on to the second part of the test. We won't use a deflector. The flow rate equals about 4 cubic meters per hour with a high level inlet line. The jet of water penetrates deeply into the tank. The air enters the water, is swirled and moves towards the pump's inlet pipe. Medium sized and small bubbles enter the pump's inlet pipe. We will now increase the flow rate to approximately 8 cubic meters per hour with a high level inlet line. The greater the head and the flow velocity at the outlet, the greater the air intake. Now, even large gas bubbles enter the pump's inlet pipe. We will increase the flow rate to approximately 12 cubic meters per hour with a high level inlet line. The jet hits the water further to the right, causing swirls at the right hand wall. The jet penetration depth has not increased. Let's carry out the third part of the test. This time we will use a deflector. The flow rate equals about 4 cubic meters per hour with a low level inlet line. Air intake is swirled deep into the water and is largely held back by the deflector. At the rear of the deflector, gas bubbles quickly rise to the surface. Only a few small gas bubbles reach the pump's inlet pipe. We will now increase the flow rate to approximately 8 cubic meters per hour with a low level inlet line. More than half of the air intake is either held back by the deflector or moved to the surface at the rear of the deflector. Only a few small gas bubbles enter the pump's inlet pipe. We will now increase the flow rate to approximately 12 cubic meters per hour with a low level inlet line. The air intake has become greater. Swirls can be seen at the lower end of the deflector. Small and medium sized gas bubbles are transported towards the outlet and enter the pump. Let's move on to the fourth part of our test, for which we will use a deflector. The flow rate equals about 4 cubic meters per hour with a high level inlet line. Air intake is swirled deep into the water, but is held back by the deflector. Only a few of the smallest gas bubbles enter the pump. We will now increase the flow rate to approximately 8 cubic meters per hour with a high level inlet line. The water jet hits the deflector above the water level. As it flows into the tank, the water is deflected vertically along the deflector. Swirls mainly occur on the left-hand side of the tank. Only some small gas bubbles enter the pump's inlet pipe. We will increase the flow rate to approximately 12 cubic meters per hour with a high-level inlet line. 
The water bounces off the deflector above the water level. The number of small gas bubbles entering the pump's inlet pipe increases. Let's move on to the fifth part of the test, which is carried out with a deflector and a balcony-like structure. The flow rate equals about 4 cubic meters per hour with a low-level inlet line. Air intake is swirled and deflected by the balcony straight back to the water surface on the left-hand side. No gas bubbles enter the pump's inlet pipe. We will now increase the flow rate to approximately 8 cubic meters per hour with a low-level inlet line. The air intake increases but is deflected by the balcony. The air remains in the left half of the tank. We will increase the flow rate to approximately 12 cubic meters per hour with a low-level inlet line. The air intake is even greater. However, the air is retained in the left half of the tank by the deflector and balcony. Only a small quantity of air enters the pump. Let's look at the sixth part of the test, which is carried out with a deflector and balcony-like structure. The flow rate equals about 4 cubic meters per hour with a high-level inlet line. The air intake enters deep into the water where it swirls. However, the air is held back by the deflector and balcony. We will now increase the flow rate to approximately 8 cubic meters per hour with a high-level inlet line. Air intake is deflected by the balcony. Swirls occur in the left half of the tank. Some small gas bubbles move into the right-hand part of the tank in which the pump's inlet pipe is located. We will increase the flow rate to approximately 12 cubic meters per hour with a high-level inlet line. The swirls caused by the deflected water jet have become stronger. A large quantity of air is retained in the left half of the tank. When using a deflector in combination with a balcony-like structure, large gas bubbles are prevented from entering the pump's inlet pipe. Air intake has a negative impact on a pump's smooth running ability and output. For this reason, pump installations must be designed to prevent or minimize air intake. If a height difference between the pipe invert and the minimum water level cannot be avoided in individual cases, deflectors and a balcony-like structure can prevent air from entering the pump. The applicable regulations and recommendations stipulate that inlet pipes must be positioned in the suction chamber in a way that prevents air from entering the pumps, gas stripping, deposits of solids on internal components and unfavorable approach flows to the pumps.